Hi, this is Oliver Lucanus from Below Water. Our first three new Tetra videos have already shown 60 species in parts 1, 2 and 3. If you've not seen them, check out the three links in the description. We're working on a video with common Tetras in nature, but first let's look at the latest 15 new Tetras that have recently been introduced to the hobby. I'm especially happy to show you the first moving pictures of the real Psoicalcius longianalis, but there's also a few other very nice new fish in this batch. Let's get started with the red pencil fish. The Rio Marañón tributaries in Peru are home to a bunch of new fish, and the most spectacular are the red nanostomus from there. The first one was introduced as a nanostomus species Senepa, but may actually come from the lower Rio Morono. It is not as red as the other new species from the Rio Amaya, but it has a very distinct black frame around the red flanks. Irregardless, these are beautiful new fish. All the red pencils come from very small habitats deep in the forest and aren't really fish for a community aquarium. If you're keeping red pencils, make sure they are the main species in the aquarium so they can show you their territorial behavior. Nanostomus are slow feeders and you don't want larger Hufesa brucon or larger cichlids eating the small food these guys require. Ideally, they have plenty of structures like these maple branches to forage throughout the day. At least in the summer month, they really enjoy live food. The second red pencil fish comes from the Rio Amaya and it has no black markings at all. It is more blood red in color and the head and back are uniform with the body. Because so many new fish came from the Rio Amaya this summer, we actually made a video with all the new species and it has a video from the fishermen showing the habitat during the rainy season. Check out that video from the link in the description or the link here on the video. Next up is Stenobrycon spilurus. Really not a beautiful fish, but these kind of silvery tetras are the most common fish when you're snorkeling in the shallow but fast moving water of a larger river. People always ask me what tetras they could keep with their plecos, and many of the new fish from the headwaters of the Mato Grosso don't really like the hot water that Shingu or Tapajos plecos require. So I think some of the less spectacular little fish from the rapids would be suitable companions. This one comes from Suriname, but there are many species with this general color pattern in the rivers that the plecos come from. The apricot tetra, Dectobrucon arminiacus, has been described for a while, but it's just sort of disappeared from the hobby. I have analog photos of this fish from the early 90s and not kept it since. It is a very beautiful fish from blackwater streams, like the Rio Amaya headwaters, and in the right conditions they become bright orange color. They also get a little bit bigger and actually make good community fish for Aquidens, Mesonauta and other peaceful medium-sized cichlids. This Knotus is also shown in our Rio Amaya video. I'm still shocked that people are not more excited about this fish. It stays small, less than 5 centimeters or 2 inches, but it is crazy territorial and has rainbow colors. At one point I'd like to see a large tank with some current and around 50 of these. They are really underappreciated fish and unlike most of the high body tetras we have shown here. There are also some common fish we just never see because of their location. For instance, Hemigramus guyanensis is found in the Guyanas and these were shipped from Suriname. It is a striking tetra that is hard enough for most water conditions and I use them here as dithers for dwarf cichlids. I have not seen the fish since the mid 80s and it's really too bad that we see so few of these fish that are not from the major export centers. Tito Charax species calamar is a real microfish, a tiny surface-oriented tetra that comes from the remote region in southern Colombia. This fish has come in on and off for several years now, so it is not really new, but it is so very fragile and tricky to acclimate and takes time to get the full color that we never see it in the hobby. These fish require cooler water and ideally live microfood. Once acclimated, they have an interesting blue coloration with a distinct black dash on the flank. When you first see Hemigramus scolioplatus, you'll be surprised that it is a Hemigramus. It is chunky and has large scales and it is quite aggressive. It is an absolutely beautiful fish and in the top 5 most expensive tetras from the entire new tetra group exported from Mato Grosso. To me, it is one of the coolest species of all the new imports. As always, the most attractive new fish are not cheap. For a large Hemigramus, it requires bigger tanks with some water flow and good oxygenation. Make sure the group is large enough so that subdominant males do not get picked on and there's enough boundaries to establish territories. 
The Mato Grosso tetras come in a wide variety of colors, but also some species can be similar to each other. Hufesa brucon comodoro is from the Rio Comodoro, and at first glance looks a lot like Hufesa brucon melanostichus or cachimboensis that we introduced in earlier videos. The lateral stripe here gets wider towards the tail, and when they are breeding, the fins get deep red color. Like all the new tetras from the Mato Grosso, have patience because they need to be mature to get their full color and try to avoid fish that are too aggressive in the same aquarium. This group lives with some Moncalcia rubra, Hufesa brucon notidanus and dwarf cichlids in a 40 gallon aquarium. They started breeding around six months after arriving a small silvery fish. Hufesa brucon satari mawe is one of the recently described fish. It is not from the Mato Grosso hotspot, but comes from Novo Olinda in the Rio Abacaxi Basin in Brazil. This fish is similar to the black neon tetras and other species in this group. Personally, I like the slender body and white tips on the fins, and in large groups, this is a very beautiful fish. Since I personally like cichlids, but also keep many species of anastomates, such as Leporinus, Sartor and others, I'm always looking for some tetra strong enough to handle the much larger and fast-moving fish in my large tanks. Most of these small tetras get lost in the big tanks, get eaten or simply cannot compete for food with the bigger and stronger fish. Jupiaba are widespread in South America, get bigger than most Hufesobrucon or Hemigramas and have some aggression on their own. These Peruvian Jupiabas or Nata live in a 40 gallon aquarium alongside adult Sartor respectus and Leporinus trilineatus and at least so far have held their own, occupying the space in the open water that the Leporinus do not like to swim in. Breeders in Europe and Asia are now producing Moncalcia bonita, which is one of my personal favorites. This is the open water schooling fish that really stands out in the famous habitat in Bonito, where it occurs with the Serpe tetra. Other than preferring cooler temperatures than the Amazonian Moncalcia species, this is a really hardy fish, and in a large group it is very beautiful. When I first saw this fish in the spring at Bonito, back when they would still allow people to swim there, it was one of the most striking fish I had seen in nature. I actually found the footage of a much younger me on the spring 20 years ago and a short analog video clip filmed at that time. Check out these sparring male Moncalcia bonita fighting over territorial boundaries along the edge of the spring. You can see that in a large group with enough space, these seemingly less colorful fish would make a spectacular display. At that time, the spring was still much deeper and the entire floor was covered in Echinodorus and other plants. Today, cornfields are encroaching on this location and I'm not sure that the place will continue to be as beautiful as it was in the early years. Bonito and the surrounding region now has a lot more tourists but the stark reality of Brazil's agricultural progress is eating away at the headwaters of the Pantanal and the Serra de Borocena region is very much under threat. We will make a video showing some of these issues in the future and include some 90s footage from this place, when forests of giant Amazon sword plants covered the entire upper portion of the spring. There are some fish that stretch the name Tetra, but I need to show off this cool fish. If you like Emperor Tetras, the Nematobrucon species, meet Psoitcalcius longianalis. This is a super cool, large, purple, hazed colored fish with small red spots. Sadly, I have only one male, but I hope to get a few more of these and film them displaying to each other in the future. The Colombian Choco region is one of the last places where we will potentially find fish new to the hobby, and I think this somewhat abrasive large charison is really exciting. The fish lives here in a 200 gallon or 800 liter aquarium with three to four times larger geophagus and it seems to have no problem. Astyanax nobre was described only this year in 2022, so technically it is the newest described species. I did not even know that I saw it when I was in the location where it is found, but when checking this video I saw it crossing the field of view. It is a very nice looking small Astyanax not like the big brooders that we usually associate with that genus. This species has been exported only a couple of times in small numbers, and it comes from south of the region famous for new tetras, from the Rio Triste, near the town of Nobres in central Brazil. Saving the best for last, let me show you the red penguin tetra from the Telespiris. At the moment, the most expensive of the new tetras from Brazil, and without doubt, one of the most exciting new fish from the last few years. They are very difficult to get and should be a prime target for breeders. 
Like other penguin tetras, they are hardy, oriented towards the top third of the water column and absolutely peaceful. Once acclimated, this species has deep red fins and a bold black bar down the middle. Males also tend to have yellow body color, while females have more gray bodies. Their swimming angle is a little bit more horizontal like most tetras and not as angled as the common penguin tetra that has been a mainstay in the hobby for many years. I hope you enjoyed our look at another 15 new tetras. Make sure to check out parts 1, 2 and 3 and share this video and subscribe to this channel.